So for this edition of Tech Talk, you find me in the car. Why? Because I have an example here of the very latest in portable computing. And here it is. This is one of the Ultrabook computers. Now, we saw these at the CES show in January, but Samsung have already got this model out here, and you can see it is that thin. I mean, why would you want to lug around a bigger laptop if you had the chance to do everything your existing laptop does in a factor this size. Now, yes, we've said before that the origin of this kind of computing has to be the fact that the Intel chip makers and the Microsoft software makers wanted to catch up with the MacBook Air, which has that same kind of slimness and attractiveness. Connectivity is interesting on this model, though. They've done, I think, a little bit better, and you find, might find it more convenient than the MacBook Air. So we've got the USBs here, and then there's a four-in-one card slot there, which allow you to put SD cards and the, and the like straight into the machine. Around the back of the hinge and then onto the other side, and if I show you these connections, you have got an Ethernet port right there it has a little drop down hinge which kind of works I wonder how flimsy it might be but it means you can put a, a network connection straight into that then there's another USB but it's got the blue uh, logo in there because it's a powered one you can actually plug in a mobile phone an mp3 player uh, whatever you might need and you can charge it using the battery in here full-size HDMI goes next which is useful I would imagine in plenty of circumstances connected to a projector or a TV and then there's the 3.5 mil for your microphone or headphones it does both depending on the circumstances and finally they haven't forgotten VGA there's a little connector here odd one I think bespoke for this which goes to a dongle and then you can plug your VGA in if you've got that kind of projector or that kind of setup in the office so that's all the connectivity if we now just um, open the machine up you'll see that we go from nothing and let's hold our breath here to ready to go in that sense now i had booted it up before so in three seconds it was ready to go in truth from sleep mode if you literally power the thing down completely and you've got no operating system awake it does take about 12 seconds to get windows booted up and so on uh, this comes with windows home premium which is a bit mean um, as a basic operating system you could upgrade if you want to on the other hand you might find that most of what you need to do is there already and this is the layout you're presented with once you open the machine up uh, over here there's a little microphone hidden under the keyboard but otherwise you've got reasonably full-size keys and I think a good deal of space between them so it is really nice to type on just as if you're at a mainframe computer at your desk uh, once you fire up the power button there it is in the corner you get that nearly instant on we talked about a little earlier. Here is the touchpad, which gives you good mouse control and two quite clear mouse clicking buttons. So let's just get rid of the uh, antivirus warning that's uh, popped up on the screen there. I'm not going to buy that right now. Bottom left of screen, usual Windows interface, and if we press the start button you get the usual menu you're familiar with from Windows 7. Despite the appearances, Microsoft Office 2010 is an invitation to buy it rather than actually provided straight out of the box. There is some Wi-Fi, I haven't got it connected at the moment right now in the car, but it does work pretty well. This though is a shame. Look at these little stickers here. Yes, it's energy efficient, it's got a guarantee, oh it's good to know it's got an i5 processor and it's Windows 7, but they're all slightly higgledy-piggledy and I think those rather stuck-on badges devalues the look of the thing. 